What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you for joining me today. It has been like a month since we've done any vlogging. There hasn't really been a whole lot going on guys. Um, we're obviously home back in Ohio. Uh, I miss South Carolina so much. And uh, yeah, it's almost the very end of October. There's only a couple days left at this point. Today's actually a really nice day. Uh, it really rained earlier, but it's like 70 something right now, so it feels very muggy. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I owe you guys a vlog because it's been a little while. Uh, so, yeah, so other than that, um, I was thinking about maybe cleaning up the back porch here a little bit um, before, you know, the weather really turns and that kind of stuff but uh one thing i do want to maybe look into today is my grand am she really hasn't been driven a whole lot lately because uh i have really really begun to suspect that i have a bad wheel bearing up front somewhere it's, uh i thought maybe it was tire noise at first but it's it's getting pretty angry so i was thinking about maybe looking into that today very carefully uh, and I thought maybe we could maybe rotate the tires on it also. The Civic is moved. Another thing that I wanted to do today was I also wanted to wash both of these. But, I don't know, it's a little later in the afternoon now. Um, I do have an appointment that I have to go to at 4 o'clock. So, it's about 1 now. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to really start either of those. Um, not sure how the rest of the week's looking. The Grand Am, my poor Grand Am, has not had a wash all summer. I really, really let it down this time, but it's also because I haven't really wanted to drive it a whole lot either. Um, because like I said, I suspect now that there could be a possible safety issue. This is really starting to spread. And it's popping this out. Nothing I can do about that. Spreading back here too. I don't know. Her time's almost up, I think. But we're gonna we're gonna try to hang on to it as long as we can. It's a real shame living around here. <laughs> So I had it out uh, like a week ago. I won't take it to work or anything anymore, I, not until we figure this out. Um, but I've been driving it kind of locally if uh, you know it sits for a little while. She fires right up. 134.593 on the clock. I think I still have power steering fluid because I'm not whining yet. So yeah. This is a pretty nice open the sunroof type day actually, so we might crack the sunroof open. Let the uh, natural air come in through the car. So what I'm going to do uh, at this point is uh, I'm planning on going to get some lunch because I am hungry, but I think I'm going to hit up the Harbor Freight. We're going to buy a stethoscope. Um, I have one at work. Honestly, I haven't even used it yet, but it's at work. Um, I'm going to buy one for home too. They're not much at the Harbor Freight. And we're going to come home and I'm going to try to get the front of the car off the ground. Uh, and. I'm probably going to take the wheels off, but <laughs> I really don't want to do this. I'm kind of scared to do it, <laughs> but we're going to put the front on the jack stands and I want to try to get the wheels to spin in drive, you know, at, at about, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. Um, I'm not sure if I could set the cruise for that, but if I could get the wheels to spin that fast then you know we could go outside with our stethoscope and kind of 
poke around the back side of the hub if the wheels are off and try to listen for any obvious noise. Um, so hopefully that works out the way that I'm planning. And then, like I said, I'm thinking about maybe actually rotating the tires because the front tires are getting a little low. The back tires still look really good and my initial plan was to buy tires to just replace those so I wouldn't have to do a rotate, but we might as well just try to get whatever life we can out of all four of these. Um, which also means we have to jack up the back and that makes me nervous too because these these back points are just gone. So we have to use the suspension to jack up the car. I don't like doing that. Anyway, uh, let's head out. Also, the camera battery uh, has not been charged pretty much since we got home from Myrtle Beach. So I charged it up and it says it's full. Don't know how long it's gonna last though. But anyway see if we can get this noise for you even with like the windows down and open you can still hear this uh, you know hum I can feel it in the wheel too so I would like to get down to the bottom of it because I would like to start driving this car again more frequently. So, yeah. I will say though, I am very, very surprised though that my ABS wiring fix for that driver's side wheel, that front driver's wheel, is still holding up really good. All right, so I just had my lunch at Chipotle. It's been a little while since I've actually eaten there. Kind of missed it. Uh, on our way to the Harbor Freight now. The sun is out, but uh, the clouds in the distance kind of have me worried that maybe we're gonna get rained out this afternoon. I really hope not. It feels like it could storm, actually. It's really humid out here, really muggy, so. Hopefully that holds off long enough for me to do what I have to do today. The breeze is nice though. All right folks, we're back home now. Um, we got our mechanics stethoscope. And I bought an actual 21 millimeter socket. Um, because the front wheels I replaced the lug nuts many years ago and I always forget that they're not 19 anymore they're 21s so I bought a 21 socket also I finally decided to buy some real wheel chocks instead of using the bricks that I have laying around the driveway so we're gonna use these these are heavy I bought both uh, two of these obviously um, that's it. So let me go in the house. I'm gonna set everything up uh, before I turn the camera back on, and uh, hopefully this, hopefully this plan will work. Uh, I really hope it does because I want to get down to the bottom of this. Okay, so we're up off the ground, at least the front. I think our stands are in a pretty good place. Um, I got the new chocks back here. Kind of kicked them in. They don't look like they're doing much, but... But they're there. Um, we can see our power steering fluid leaking through here. <laughs> uh, so what I gone and did right now is uh, I loosened the lugs they're still like tight keeping the wheel on but I mean I you know I broke the torque on them while the tires were still on the ground um, you know the one thing I want to do is just kind of see if there's any play in the wheels because sometimes that's a good giveaway you know of there being a problem with the hub and now this one still feels good so I'm gonna move to the next one. 
I'm honestly suspecting that this is the one with the the hub problem. I could be wrong. Oh, this one still feels tight too. So um, I might put the car in neutral and just kind of spin these wheels and see if I feel anything um, as far as you know any light grinding or anything. You can see how bad this wheel is um, compared to the other side. Got some outer shoulder wear here. Car has a perfect alignment, but you know, uh, there could be, it could be maybe the hub. If the hub is, you know, bad on this wheel here, it could be, you know, or it honestly just could simply be because this is the drive wheel and this wheel may always have a little more wear considering the fact that it has to pull the car, you know, to get it going. So, I mean, that could also be a possibility. See, this one looks a lot better. It's not, you know, that much better, but I mean, it is, it is better. So, before I uh, decide to take the wheels off, uh, we'll just put it in neutral. And we'll just see if we can roll these wheels. And if we don't feel anything here, then we'll just uh, we'll just have to start it up. We'll have to start it up and do our our thing. Hmm. Hear that? <laughs> what is that? Hmm. No, oh, this side does it too. Wonder if it's the boot stretching or something. So one other trick that I was taught was if, uh, it's gonna be hard for me to demonstrate, should have brought the tripod out here, but if you can spin the wheel or have the wheels spinning, and if you grab a hold of the coil spring on the strut, you will sometimes feel the vibration of the hub if it's associated you know, to this, uh, to the bat hub. So, I did try to do it with the car in neutral still. And let me see if uh, this isn't going to be much, but I'm going to grab a hold of the, the strut here. And spinning this, I don't, I don't feel anything, any kind of vibration going through the strut or the spring. The spring feels pretty um, smooth. So if we go to the other side, and uh, if I do the same thing over here, grab a hold of the spring, it feels kind of choppy. Like I can feel like the grind in the spring. Darn it. So, so, I think I'm gonna carry on. Uh, we're gonna start the car, we're gonna take the wheels off. Hopefully I can get the brake rotors to stay on with these lug nuts. Hopefully they're deep enough. So we're gonna take the wheels off. Uh, we're gonna put it in drive. I'm gonna see if we can set the cruise uh, for like, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. Not sure if it will engage or not. Uh, I know we're we're gonna set some ABS codes again because the back wheels are gonna be reading zero. So we'll have to clear those, no big deal. Um, I'm 
I'm still willing to bet though this is the bad one. So we'll get the wheels off, see if we can get the car to safely run this axle on, these ja on this jack stand. And we'll use our new stethoscope to try to poke around behind the hub carefully and see if we can hear a difference in the two. But I don't know, the way that the spring feels, I think this is our hub, that's, that's, that's the culprit. That's gonna be my uh, hypothesis at the moment. Okay, so we got the tires off. I uh, tightened the lug nuts a little bit against the rotor. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that'll hold. I feel like a doctor, minus the, you know, probe thing. Well, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> so let's see if this thing will be able to uh, get some speed up front here without uh, falling off the stands. Uh, Oh, 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 there you go. Sorry, honey. Okay. All right, so she's in gear. Okay, so she'll go to about 10. Try to speed it up a little bit here. Oh, 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 okay. Can't set it, let me turn traction off. Okay, so let's go back up to about 25. There's all of our ABS codes. Darn it. Cruise will not set. Yikes, all right, I don't want to go too fast. Try this again. Yikes, yikes, not too fast. Oh, I can totally hear it. Cruise won't set. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to let it roll with however fast it wants to go now. Looks like it wants to go a little faster. It might still be in second gear. So if we can carefully do this, <laughs> oh my god. All right. This mic uh, thing is very sensitive. Okay, so I hear noise. I think it might just be the rotor. This side has the grind. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is this side for sure. I wish I could show you guys. Um, I don't know. How, let me see if I can put one of these up to the microphone, maybe. Okay, hold on. I don't know if this is going to work, but... I don't know. I hope you guys heard that. And then the other side. It even feels different when you're touching the, the probe to it. Okay, well hopefully that came out on video, that'd be sweet.
but uh, it is uh, this hub for sure. That was my suspicion. I'm glad that I was right. So let's go ahead and yeah, you can hear it when the car's not moving, like actually moving. You hear it? <laughs> it's just oh. All right, so we're gonna go neutral. Let that kind of slow down on its own. All right. And I'm gonna have some codes to clear. That has to be expected. All right. So we got down to the bottom of that finally. Um, so the nice thing about these cars is the hubs are bolt-on. <laughs> the only problem is it's a Northeast Ohio car. So even though it's bolt-on, that does not mean it's going to come out. Um, this is probably still original, um, original factory hub because when we did the wiring on the other side for one I thought this nut here was way too clean <laughs> um, so that and the wiring itself before I cut the uh, stuff away uh, looked a lot different than the stuff over here that one had like a rope type of uh, coating on it this one has looks like just plastic plastic coating and look at the nut the nut is that looks OEM so um, so the other one over there was probably changed at one point this is probably still OEM so uh, she needs to be changed look at all the power steering fluid I think I have a little bit left in the car I'm gonna probably dump it in here so yes sir um, all right, so that's it. Um, I wanted to do the uh, rotate. You can see how these tires are a little bit better than the ones up front. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have time now. Got to clean all this stuff up and get it back to uh, back to normal, so I don't miss my appointment at four. I think it's going on three o'clock now. Yeah, so uh, I guess we're going to wrap it up now. I'm not going to do the hub today, obviously, but now I know what I have to do. And uh, I'm just glad that I finally got that all figured out. Man, I really hope that the sound came out on camera. I hope you guys heard that. <laughs> so, all right, let me get all this situated here and uh, let me put the car back together. All right, so we got the wheels torqued. We're back on the ground. Got the Altel here. We're going to clear the codes, but the lights didn't come back, so um, it's probably just the uh, pending codes. Or, not pending. <sighs> Stored codes. History codes. So, I anticipated on that happening. Alright, so, yeah, I thought for sure it was coming from that side. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell because, you know, a noise can resonate throughout the whole cabin, you know, and uh, you wouldn't know, you know, exactly where it's coming from. Whew. I am tired all of a sudden. Uh, chassis, trouble codes, read codes. Yeah, history. So left front wheel speed sensor input signal equals zero. Left left front weird. Uh, oh wait, that's because of the random ABS lights that come on because of my repair. Um, if I turn the wheel too much or something. So that one doesn't count. Left rear wheel speed sensor input signal equals zero. Right wheel right right rear wheel speed sensor equals zero so yeah I was expecting those to come up so um, all right let's erase them that's a 
that's it. Um, one thing I wanted to look at while I was out here also, so the, the, the service engine light's on uh, for an O2 sensor code. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's been actually taking a toll on the car. Um, she's running a bit rich. I noticed, you know, she's kind of shaky. You know, been shaky for a while. Um, so I think, uh, and keep in mind, there's no cat on the car. So the second O2, uh, I don't have a code for that. So, um, but the, the, you know, the front oxygen sensor, uh, we have to replace it. This car was not running this badly <laughs> um, for you know a while, but at negative 11 fuel trim, it's um, you know it's it's running a little bit rich, I think. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I really do have to get a uh, get a no two sensor for this thing. I don't have a whole lot left, so I'm probably just gonna dump in whatever is left. Still a decent amount in there, but am I ever gonna replace that line? I don't know. I still have awful flashbacks of uh, the power steering lines from the Aztec. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. Now, granted, these are easier. Those lines actually run up through the top and back behind the engine. The Aztec, it was it was a nightmare. All right, this should last me a little while longer. Yeah, that looks a little better. And one other thing, uh, I gotta do an oil change on it before the end of the year. The oil doesn't look bad, but it's been in here for about a year. I mean, it's dark now, but for the most part, it's still pretty clean looking. So, I mean, I've only put about 1,600 miles on this oil since it's been in here over the last year. So that's uh, it's really not too bad. But before winter, we will do the oil change for it also. But uh, yeah, I got to get that O2 sensor. It is running progressively worse. Worse than it has been, sadly. Yeah, see, right, so it kind of balanced itself out a little bit. But it's, uh, the O2 sensor has a bad heater circuit, but I think uh, there's also a code for the, um, for the O2 sensor having like bad readings or something along those lines. Eh, there we go. Heater, so heated oxygen sensor circuit insufficient activity uh, and heated oxygen sensor heater performance. And then an EVAP leak. This car is probably always going to have an EVAP leak. I would laugh so hard if I changed the gas cap and it really was the gas cap because it's not always the gas cap. It's funny. So, I have to get ready for my appointment today. Um, if you guys enjoyed this vlog, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, stay tuned because I will be doing a hub, not sure when. Um, I'm probably just going to hit up the Rock Auto for the hub. Uh, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I want cheap, but not cheap cheap. So just something to pretty much ride out this car for the rest of its life. Who knows how much longer that's going to be. But uh, I do want to change it out.
because I want to drive this car safely. Uh, and yeah, so that'll be coming probably in the near future, I hope. Um, and uh, yeah, I get, we'll probably do the oxygen sensor at some point soon too, probably before winter. And what else? I don't know, the tire rotation, but that'll probably happen when I do the hub. So, that's all. That's all I've got for you guys today. I'm going to clean up my stuff and get in the house. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and take care.